So good evening, everyone. As you know, my name is Vicki Lowry. I'm the program director for the Vision Loss Alliance of New Jersey. And also joining us is Natalia Morales, program coordinator. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, so thank you for joining us this evening. And just as a reminder, this program is being recorded. We ask that you please mute yourselves. And after a few moments of quiet, we will begin. So welcome to Tech Talks hosted by Vision Loss Alliance of New Jersey. Tonight we are joined by Amos Miller, the founder and CEO of Glidance. Some of you may have heard of him from his time at Microsoft and the development of Soundscape. Glidance is bringing about a new era of independence for the blind and visually impaired with the creation of Glide. Imagine having a personal guide that adapts to your pace, leading you confidently to your destination while ensuring a safe path and avoiding obstacles. That's exactly what Glide is, a self-guided mobility aid that revolutionizes how you navigate the world independently. Before we move on to tonight's presentation, let's review our Zoom protocol. We ask that you hold your questions until Amos cues you. When you ask your question, we ask that you raise your hand for those of you who dialed in, the raise your hand feature is star nine. Star six will mute and unmute you, giving you the opportunity to ask your question. Using a computer, Alt Y to raise your hand, Alt A is the mute and unmute command. If you are using a Mac, use the option plus Y, the keyboard shortcut to raise or lower your hand. Alt A to mute and unmute yourself. Using the Zoom app on the iPad, move to the top right, select the more option and flick down to the raise hand. On the iPhone, this feature is located at the bottom of the screen on the right side. And now we welcome to tonight's Tech Talks, Amos Miller. Vicky, thank you very much. It's a, it's a honor to be here. Um, I'd love for this to be a fairly open conversation and for folks to feel completely uh, at ease coming in with questions and opinions and ideas. Um, and so please, I'm probably not going to be able to see the hands going up. I'm also blind. Uh, if so, if you are you, would you be okay to bring people yes. in if they want to ask any questions as we go absolutely yes yes between natalia and i will, we will help you with the questions okay yeah. thank you very much oh and, you're uh, welcome yeah uh, so thank you and i i'm not sure what everybody's awareness of uh, our work at glidance so i'll start from the from ground zero and uh we'll build uh build up from there and we can um take the conversation where it takes it takes everyone um so as vicky said my name is amos miller um i am the founder and ceo of glidance and at glidance we are developing a glide glide is a new mobility aid uh, that uses autonomous driving technology um by way of background before we kind of go into the product itself I want you to imagine for a moment uh, a city street in five or 10 years time. And I would put it to you that in five or seven years time, we will start to see many more people with blindness out and about, people of all ages, walking confidently and with purpose, some of us will be using canes and uh, guide dogs, but I believe that many will also be assisted by some form of an embodied intelligent guide. This is a device. It's a device, um, not necessarily the friendly character in our ear that tells us what to do or a body armor that we wear and vibrates and gives us a direction. I also don't think those intelligent guides are going to be humanoids that uh, sit with us for coffee, um, which is an entertaining image, but I don't actually think that that's what we are going to see. 
I'm thinking more of a device devices that are more of an extension of you, part of you that give you a profound sense of agency, of flow, of confidence when you are out and about. I would also put it to you that these embodied intelligent guides are going to be so easy to use and powerful and affordable that anyone with blindness will able, be able to get out and about. And you may not feel like that today, uh, whether you've been blind all your life or lost your sight later in life. I don't think you will hesitate as much as you might today uh, before going out, whether you'll be able to cross that street or whether um, you can find the door to that building or how would you make uh, that step of the journey. You will feel empowered to go. Um, I believe that that's an, an inevitable future. Given where we are with technological developments today, this is going to happen. And the reason that uh, I'm here on these conversation, and thank you, Vicky and Natalia, for inviting me, is that I believe that we need to talk about what this means. Because this change is happening now. These intelligent guides will have a profound impact on everything in the blind, low vision community. What does O&M training look like? What does safety look like? What happens if people buy these devices on Amazon and just go? How do we expect the public to respond to them? Do they still symbolize a blind person? Um, like in the same way that a cane or a guide dog does? Do we want them to symbolize? I think these are questions uh, that we don't definitely have the answer for. Uh, this is a, a discussion that uh, that the community needs to have. Um, and I think it's on us in these kind of meetups and conversations to explore these questions as a community as we shape this exciting future together. Um, by, may, by way of background, I am blind myself. I lost my sight in my 20s uh, due to uh, retinitis pigmentosa. Some of you might be familiar with. Uh, I'm on my sixth guide dog, and I, d I have enjoyed a super exciting career in tech, but I still find it difficult to get around. And I'm not the only one. Of course, there are a lot of folks out there who, who still find it difficult to get around. I've always loved technology, and like many of you, I have explored a whole range of technology over the years. As Vicky mentioned in the introduction, I uh, was involved in the development of Soundscape while I was uh, working at Microsoft. Um, and yet, when I sit there at the airport and wait for somebody to come and assist me, to take me to my gate, I still wonder, right? We have incredible technologies at our disposal. We have... Uh, self-driving cars. We have those rovers that uh, navigate themselves on Mars. Where is that intelligent guide that can get us to the gate? And what I realized is that to navigate confidently, to walk confidently in a space, getting the information that we get from various technologies is just not enough. What we need is something that is physically connected to the ground and guides. You've all been there, trying to navigate through a crowded space, a big open area, a city street with uh, street furniture on one side, trees and lampposts on the other, pretty complicated situations to navigate through for the best of us. And my conclusion from my research is that what we need is something that is physically connected to the ground and and guides. And that's really the foundation for, for what Glide is, the product that, uh, that uh, Glidence is working on. So Glide, as I um, started to indicate, is a self-guided mobility aid. And picture, uh, it's a picture, a long handle, 
um, that uh, is at 45 degrees to the ground. You hold on to the handle, and at the end of the handle, there are two wheels. Good, big terrain wheels. Uh, the device has cameras and sensors and so on, and you hold on to that handle. You nudge the device forward, and as you start to walk, the wheels begin to steer a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, uh, guiding you safely on the path, steering you around obstacles, uh, and p guiding you to all the way to your destination. Basically, the camera and the sensors that are on the device give the device a nice extended view of what is what is in front of you. Uh, the device then works out the safest path to guide you on. Uh, it may detect potential targets like a dropped curb or a door or an elevator or escalators, and it will seek to develop a path and guide you all the way to those potential targets. And really the benefits here are that it's much, much easier to walk. You walk upright and with confidence and the device device guides you uh, between those those spaces. And the device can also communicate. There's haptics, haptic symbols and also voice in the handle that give you can give you information about uh, what's what you're encountering. And there's of course the possibility of connecting the device to a navigation app. Uh, in the phone so that you can set the destination uh, for where you are you're going. Um, I think I'll pause here. There's more things I can add, but uh, I've covered a lot of ground and I would love to hear some of the uh, initial questions that people have and I can share more about where we are with the development and uh the opportunities for people to see the device and so forth but let's see uh, where folks's head is at i'd love to hear some comments or questions hi hello this is Stephen mccoy um hi, i Stephen. um hi how are you i was uh, li literally just very interested in um in this and um, as someone who was first diagnosed with um, retinitis pigmentosa, then we realized that it came from Usher syndrome. So mm -hmm. I have um, a sighted, sight and, and hair and loss, sorry. And, um, and this is something that most certainly, I think a product that can be used, um, as you stated, there's sometimes uncertainty and um, a, a slight anxiety when it comes to leaving a home. So I just know this is something that any 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 sort of technology that can improve, um, you know, whether our social skills or just being able to get out the home. And I know you said that this device also includes a sensor. I guess it. I'm not exactly sure, um, but I just. I'm interested in definitely seeing how this works. So what are the opportunities that any of us on here would be able to test out the device? Where can we go? Or... Yeah, I mean, at the moment, we literally have three of them, uh, three prototypes that we are working on, and then and we're working on another set. Um, so let me. So, so the the immediate answer is whoever is able to make it to the NFB convention or the ACB be... convention next week, we will be there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I great! That, are, are you going to be this? Yes, I'm the deaf blind facilitator for the NFB. So yeah, I'll definitely be there, and I'll be uh, presenting as well. Oh, wonderful. So I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, there. We we actually were able to secure a, a demo area in front oh, of perfect. the exhibit hall where we can uh, sort of take take the time to give people a good uh, detailed demo. So we, oh, we hope great. to see you there. Yes, we know that it's I know it's difficult to imagine quite how it feels and uh, and how it works. Um, mm -hmm. 
Sometimes I describe it as imagine if you were pushing a supermarket uh, trolley and uh, it was it it guided you instead of uh, you having to guide it. it. Kind of feels a bit like that. If, um, but the interesting thing about glide is that it doesn't pull you either. The wheels are not uh, not motorized in a way that the device drags you around. You 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 wheel it forward, and the wheels steer the way based on the uh, computer vision and the, and sensors that the device is using to to see the environment. So I look forward to seeing seeing you there next week. And, yeah, and thank you. So and much. for other. Um, opportunities to see the device the best thing is to go to our website glidance.io it's the word guidance with the letter l instead of the u so it's glidance.io um, we we publish our demo days and uh, locations where we where our team is able to demonstrate the devices and you can also register with us um and we we keep people uh, informed quite regularly about the developments and where we're going to be. Uh, we also hold regular Zoom calls every Wednesday, last Wednesday of every month to, to provide people with opportunities to discuss and understand uh, where we are with the product. That's great, thank you. Yeah. So we have um, three people with their hands raised, so I'm just gonna go kind of in order. Um, Naisha. Hi. Hi. Hi, Nisha. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for the information. I kind of had a question. So will AI be a major component in the way that the device functions and operates? So I'm I am a blind guy, but I'm also an engineer, and I'll I'll explain to you using as, as terminology as best as I can. But feel free to to ask for clarifications. But basically, AI is definitely a component, but AI is also a wide, very broad term. Uh, so we we actually use um, more deterministic robotics so, so robotics that don't rely on ai for the basic level of uh, safety and navigation on a on a path making sure that you don't uh, that that you avoid obstacles that you avoid what we call cliffs which are basically drops like um, the edge of a platform or the edge of the curb uh, or the steps um, and also overhead obstacles. So we have sensors that look out for those. What we use AI for uh, is in two places. One is to um, for the device to recognize uh, things in the environment. So to recognize a door, to, re to detect a, de a dropped curb, to detect a, a, a crosswalk and keep you safe on that crosswalk, which requires computer vision capability um and that's and we use that to detect those destinations or those targets and then uh, we guide you to it and we we also use ai for voice interaction where you can say to the device find the door or uh find crispy cream or something like that and uh, the device will start to look for that and uh, once it det detects one it'll guide you to it so that's where we have uh, ai involved as well hope that okay. helps yes thank you just a follow-up question <laughs> would the device be able to safely uh assist you across the street using um red lights you know uh, stop signs in other words or green red light and whatever will it be able to safely get you across the street or will we still need to use kind of like the um the way that we were we are being taught now yes um <laughs> Honestly, I would never rely on a device to fully uh, take responsibility for deciding when to cross the road. 
I think uh, th that might happen in a few years' time. I would say at this stage, what you can rely on the device like this to do is to get you across the road in the quickest, uh, at a straight line, get you up, get you at the shortest path to the to the up curb on the other side, keep you on the sidewalk. Uh, also, make sure that you get to the edge of the cr the crosswalk and, and stop before you get onto the road, and so you have a good place to stop and assess the traffic. We we do have that camera, and we are looking for ways to provide additional information, such as um, if the light it changes, and that's something that we are looking at. But I wouldn't say that uh, it's guaranteed uh, at the moment. Um, and of course, if there is anything in the way that's blocking the way, uh, the device will not, not let you will 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 not let you get uh, get into the road. Um, so, so there are some inputs, and, and in any case, you what you will have to do when you decide to cross the road is actually press the button on the device to release the brakes so that you can get uh, so that you can so you can make that uh, determined decision to cross the road. But we we continue to to stay at the state of the art of technology and seeing uh, looking for ways to uh, make that easier and easier. Thank you. One of the things that it can help you with is if it, if the crossings are complicated, like sometimes you have to go onto an island, then onto another island, and then look for the pl other place. Those are kind of situations that the device will definitely be able to help you on. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, we have another um, question from there. It's a telephone number. Uh, the last four digits are 7051. Hi, that's me, Tanya. How are you? Hi, Tanya. Um, I'm going to first piggyback off of the question she had about the street crossing. The system that's set up now for us to press the button and it'll say wait, wait, and or to give you the audible of doo -doo 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 when it's time to cross. Is it possible that your system can be um, taught to interact with that type of system to, like, I guess, to maybe not tell you to win the cross per se, but to actually confirm that it is safe? Because although that device is telling us, like the, um, the street device is telling us it's okay to cross, your system would also say, yes, all the cars have stopped moving, basically, because it doesn't have any, any I'm sorry, any movement um, from traffic coming. That was just a, that was just a brainstorm. Um, my question was. I love the I brainstorm. Say, I love. Thank I, you. Thank you for for that. I think there's a bunch of interesting ideas there. Mm -hmm. um, I also heard you say that it gives you that you can give it voice commands like find crispy crispy cream, et cetera. Does that mean that it has an ability to give you audible instructions, like either through a Bluetooth headphone or something like that, where you can hear it say turn left, turn right, or it's five, it's you know five feet away or something like that. Or is it just all manual, no audio? That was one of the questions. Um, the other one is I wanted you to repeat the website because I couldn't quite get it. And what else? Oh, does it sense when the ground is slippery? Because you know how we have some situations where, you know, we can't always tell if it's a slippery spot. Even when you when you're sighted, sometimes you can't see some of the slippery spots. But is it going to be designed, or is it designed to also indicate? Um, safety hazards such as that? I know I threw a lot out there, but I just- Yeah, to, if, I, take... if I don't remember all the answers, I'll, then just poke me again, okay? <laughs> but uh, the first for glidance.io and uh, is the website, G-L-I-D-A-N-C-E.io. Okay, and then maybe Vicky can send it out in the uh, after the call. Uh, for folks to, to find the link, you'll get information. There's a registration uh, button there as well. Um, so that's where you do that. In terms of uh, finding Krispy Kreme, um, there's different ways that you can do that. One is, let, let's imagine that you use Google Maps, and Google Maps is the one that's giving you the instructions. Okay. And uh -huh. in that case, you can either just follow the instructions from Google Maps and you can f use Glide in a freestyle mode where you decide and you you tell Glide at, at this intersection, I want to turn left. You basically press the left button and then Glide guides you around the corner and turns turn takes the left for you. Yeah, so you are 
uh, you're in control of everything. Glide keeps you safe. You can ask it to turn left a, bit, a lot like you'd work with a service dog if you've ever ever worked with one where they take you to the to every point of decision and then you tell them which way to go. The other option is that um, you you say you say crispy crispy cream. And in that, and if if it's Krispy Kreme is 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 like on the street that you're on, and it can see where it is, it will just guide you there. It's not going to tell you. It will tell you, okay, it's forty yards away. I can spot the door, and I'm taking you there. Yeah. So you'll you'll continue to push uh, the device forward, and and the wheels will to guide you to the guide you to the door of Krispy Kreme. And the and the final one, which I think is the one that you wanted to 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 ask about is while you walk, can it audibly give me uh, uh, walking directions? Uh, and that that's a possibility that we are looking at exactly whether it will be the device that gives you the directions or whether it's more the, the a phone with a navigation app that gives you the directions. I, I can hear though in your questions that you might prefer it to be the device itself, but if I misinterpret that, just... Uh, let me know because th this is uh, it's good to understand what your preference would be as well. No, I was I was questioning whether the device would be able to speak to you, like if you had a headphone, like a headphone. It can. Uh, it can speak to you. Me. Yeah, it will speak to you mainly to describe things that are happening in the environment. Uh, describe landmarks. Describe targets. Uh, but it can also give you walking directions, um, and that's something that we're looking at. Okay, great. And the last okay. one was about would it be able to give you safety, um, um, point out safety issues like a slippery area on the ground or the, or the street, something like that? Oh, yeah. Um, if it sees problem problems on the ground, it will try to avoid them, but... I uh, I would say that uh, identifying a slippery pavement or like a, a, some a, you know a section with a, a bit of ice might be a tall order for it. So we'll have to see how well we can train the device to detect those kind of. It, it will definitely detect other inconsistencies like um, potholes and uh, true tree tree branch like when when the brand, when the roots grow through the through the pavement and things like that okay thank you mm -hmm. okay and uh thank you we have another question from clark <clears throat> hi hello yeah hi, clark. I, I had a hey, i had a question um basically <clears throat> yeah, how would uh, how much we look how much would something like this cost or what are you estimating the price would be for this uh, particular device may i uh ask what you'd expect it to be uh i would i would just say pretty expensive <laughs> you know, I mean, usually uh, any uh <laughs> Of these new devices that come out, you know, for people like us, typically uh, run, you know, tend to be, I would say, on the expensive side, and uh, you know, and usually with uh, our community, you know, price is a, you know, it's definitely a factor, a significant factor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. We, my team and I, from the ground up, have worked to contain the cost of the device, the complexity of the device, making sure that we can use powerful but low-cost components, sensors, computers. Um, at the moment, our sort of target retail price is is fifty. Fifteen hundred dollars, so one thousand five hundred, and that's okay. what we have on our website. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean that that's that's a price that uh, we we believe with that 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 we can achieve. Um, I know that it's still uh, a, a, still a tough purchase for for some folks. 
and we will be looking to work with organizations to make sure that there's other ways uh, uh, to support the, the cost of the device and, and pay for it. Okay. I would say, uh, again, uh, don't, I'm not here to um, make promotions, but uh, it the, we do, uh, we will be going into our pre-orders. Uh, actually, there's three more days for people who are crazy enthusiastic to put a deposit down uh, for a 40% discount, which takes it to an $8.99 price. Um, and when the pre-orders open in the middle of July, uh, there'll be a 30% discount. But that's really for people who are interested to back the project, interested to uh, be part of the uh, development of the product, because we are still at least a year away before these devices will be ready. We're talking about September of 2025, when we expect people to be able to start receiving them at home. September 2025, that's 14 months away at best. And um, so I would I would definitely say that these pre-orders are, they require a certain level of resilience and belief in the project uh, in order to, in order to do, to make them. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Ashley, you had your hand up. Yeah, that's me, huh? Hi. Yep. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um. Yeah, I was wondering. Um. Um. Well, anyway, the lady, the last lady that spoke, kind of got started talking about some of my questions. So I'm glad that others have the same questions. Um. But um. Sort of along those lines of safety and streets and obstacles, I was wondering. Um, you did indicate in answering her that that it does like detect trash cans and overhanging branches, mm -hmm. uh, so obstacles. So, um, I was wondering along those lines. Do you mean that it will like alert you audibly, or will it alert you with like a vibrating thing to kind of guide you? away from that like how does that work into and how far away are you from the object before you're um alerted because i'm wondering so you have time to react um that was like my first question and also like um the um um the other one was um um does it for streets i know that for some people if, they're, if they can't see at all um, or depending on their vision, they might, they may not, you know, line up good at the street and cross it in a straight line, which is really important. So you don't veer into traffic. So I guess the question I have is, um, along those lines is, does the device, um, like kind of like steer you across as you start to cross, does it steer you in a straight line? So you're crossing to the curb as opposed to as opposed to veering like and hitting traffic and also um safety wise um will it be able to sense um like something like a like an idling car because nowadays we all know that cars when they stop um like at a stop sign they don't even make noise most of them don't because they turn off the engines cuz they're hybrid cars half that means half electric half um yeah. Yes. So yeah, so, those are kind of my No, questions. these are good questions. Um let, let me first try to address the first one about how does it deal with how does it inform you about the obstacles, okay? Um and the, the reality is that it doesn't really inform you. It tries to find a path around the obstacles and guide you on on that path, okay? And the way that it guides, it doesn't give you vibrations in the handle. It actually turns and goes around the handle. It's a bit like a Roomba robot with a long stick. Oh. Okay. It actually goes around it. You just have to follow it. Okay. You follow the you follow it around. It's a robot. You follow the robot around and you 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 don't even know that the obstacle was there. 
And that's also how it guides you across the street. It it will look for the uh, for the crosswalk lines and guide you no. in between them. To, uh, and it will look for the up curb and guide you towards that again by the same same idea as a Roomba with a long stick that you can feel where it's going and you're following it. It's not really a great description as a Roomba with a long stick because it's uh, it's much fancier than that. But at least it, it, it might have explained uh, how you would do that. In, in terms of idling traffic, again, I don't want to make too many strong claims about, you know, will we see a car coming? And if we do, what are we going to do? Like, are we going to press the brakes? Are we going to shout that you need to move faster? Um, yeah, I would say uh, that... Definitely, if there's a car in the way, the robot will stop. Yeah. Um, if there is a car approaching and getting in the way, it we will look for ways that we can detect if we can detect that reliably uh, and and also stop. Um, it's a it's a lot like like working with a guide dog across the street, mm -hmm. uh, or like a cane as well, where you have to be pretty alert um, and the device will try to avoid anything that happens on the way and keep yeah. you on the safe path and get you to the other side. Yeah, so that that's helpful to know. So it, it, it just it just guides you. Sounds like it just guides you by the sensors. So then is there any way, um, especially if you want to travel at night or in like low lighting, like if it's cloudy, like if a storm's coming, I guess I'm wondering if there any way for it to, like by lighting or something, alert pedestrians that you're there. So like you're more visible. You're um, full of so good ideas, my those, goodness. Like yes. a flashing light or something. <laughs> we, we It does have visibility lighting on it. Um, oh, good. good. Yeah. So it, especially when it's dark uh, or low visibility, it does have um, visibility lighting that can be stable or it can be moving, flashing, different colors. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're we're, going, we're looking forward to playing around with those to to make it super visible. But again, at the level that you want, maybe when you're crossing a road, you want to be more visible when we're, than when you're exactly. just walking at the sidewalk. Right, so levels of visibility to let the user control. That sounds like a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we have um, a couple questions that came through the chat, and then we have a couple more people with their hand raised. So the um, question in the chat, will it have an app to connect to a smartphone? Uh, if you're going to use AI, how will it connect to the internet or will it be on the device uh, model? So it will have an app, a companion app to manage the device. For example, uh, for, for updating the device with new software updates, which you should fully expect to have lots of them because it's a learning device. It gets better and better over time in detecting more and more complex pedestrian environments. Um, and the AI, most of it runs on the device. It will occasionally go to the cloud for additional AI power. For example, when you uh, you want the device to give you a more in-depth analysis or the description of an environment, like uh, when you walk into a hotel or into the lobby of a building or uh, you're facing something that you're not clear what's going on, we might uh, go up to the cloud which is on the internet to get um, a, a more powerful uh, AI capability to give you a better description, which means that for for ordinary walking uh, use, it doesn't need data connection. But for those more advanced features, uh, more advanced AI, it does need access to the internet. Um, and we are, have not finalized the decision on whether that will be done through a cellular connection on the device or whether it will go through the phone and therefore through your data plan. 
Honestly, we are hearing from the community very strong opinions in both directions. Some people are very adamant that it needs to have its own connection because it will always be useful and always be connected. And other people say, why, why take that additional cost? Use my data plan. That's what I have it for. So we'll, um, we, are, we are trying to uh, finalize that. Great. Maybe we'll offer two options, but uh, uh, that, that will become clearer in the next six months or so. And it, would this be available for both iOS and Android? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then there's another, we have an, uh, another question still in the chat. Um, I think you already answered this. You do have a working prototype, correct? You said three? We have working prototypes um, each time. I So, and Stephen, I think earlier talked, we talked about seeing them at the NFB later mm -hmm. uh, next week. Uh, each time we bring them, we, we show more and more improved capabilities. I will emphasize though, that we are showing early stage prototypes that are being developed. So not all the features are fully integrated and working like the final product will, uh, but it's very important for us to receive the feedback now while we are still building the device, because in six months time, it'll get harder to make changes. Yeah. So we really appreciate the fact that people are willing to use some imagination to understand how the device is ultimately going to work. Makes sense. Thank you. And then one last question from the chat. Um, have you tested it in the low temperatures, like really cold states? Um, we are, so the simple answer is I have not taken it in extreme cold temperature, but I, but also I have not yet, the prototypes don't have the final electronics inside them. We are working to the range of, uh, zero Fahrenheit to 110, I believe, is the range that we're working to. Um, so pretty cold, uh, but probably not the coldest. Um, so we'll have to, uh, we'll be, we'll provide more precise uh, specifications on that once we, we, we do our final selection of electronics. Right. Thank you. Um, okay, and next we have uh, Tanya. You have your hand raised again. Okay, yes. Um, I just had a couple of quick questions. In terms of the runtime and the charge time, I'm not sure how how the device is charged. Is it a battery? Is it a, um, do you plug it in like USB port? So what's the charge time and the runtime? Great, um, great question. And the, yeah. and the other question is, about the weight of the device itself, you know, cause sometimes people have other issues like where they can't hold things up for long periods of time. Or like if you have carpal tunnel, for example. So what's the weight of the, of the, um, the device and the lifespan? Is this something that you anticipate to have like a five year lifespan or less or 10 year lifespan, um, things like that. And the last yeah, question- Yeah, no, great question. Mm -hmm. I know you said that 2025, September 2025, is when you expect it to be really available to the open public, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Does that, does that mean that you're still, I know that means that you're still um, working on, you know, getting any, if, any, if at all, any kinks out of it. But is that only going to be done with the population that purchased it in advance? Or are you um, taking volunteers of some sort to help you, like, you know, to utilize it to see what type of things that you should incorporate or take out or tweak in this area of that. Yeah, okay. Well, the, the last question, we will start to, we will be testing the device uh, earlier, late, uh, later this year uh, with people in, in home environments and so on. And, and the best, best way to, to get be involved in that is to register with us, fill out the questionnaire that comes out um it's not only the people who purchased it early so so absolutely not battery life and i'll try to be quick because i know that we're almost out of time it's an all-day charge uh, with six hours of active use so basically when you are not walking the device goes to sleep and then when you carry on it it wakes up again and continues so that 
and the goal is to give you six hours of active use, very quick wake up time. Uh, the charge time is around four hours overnight over a USB-C cable. Um, so the uh, so basically, if you have a USB-C connection anywhere, you can you can always charge it. Uh, weight. So first of all, I appreciate the comment about the weight. It's a very important important first that the device is a viable, uh, versatile device. You can easily fold, pick up, get into a car, get onto a bus, get onto a plane, um, push it under the chair in a restaurant. So it it is the handle is telescopic, so you can make it. Uh, you can shrink the device down. Um, when you use it, you don't actually carry it. It's so it's very very light when it's in use. When you're when you're pushing it forward and holding the handle, extremely light. Like uh, it's almost like a feather. You don't feel that weight. Uh, the device its weight itself. Our target weight is five to. Probably five pounds, maybe six pounds, but in that range, so that you are able to pick it up uh, when you need to um, for a short period of time. I think I hit your questions. Was there another one there? The lifespan expectancy. The lifespan, thank you. Yeah. Uh, at least four years uh, as part, uh, and, and, but but it'll probably be the the five to seven years uh, lifespan of the device. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Vicky, I'm I don't know if you're there, but uh, you there? Hi, it's Natalia. I'm here. Natalia. Uh, I know that we are coming up to the top of the hour, and I, the uh, the National Federation has an, a session that starts in two minutes that I need to be on uh, in the in preparation for the NFB convention next year, next week rather rather than next year. Um, so I I want to say for, we have on the website uh, a, a very extensive question a frequently asked questions section hey. that i encourage folks to, uh, to encourage folks to go on to and and get more questions answered if you register with us uh, we will uh, definitely be able to answer more questions online and I'd always be happy to come on again onto your call and uh, onto your talk and, and continue the conversation Excellent. Yeah, mommy. Yeah, Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, it was a very engaging conversation with everyone, and I will certainly send to yeah, mommy. Yeah, Joey. For uh, this recording, so you everyone has it on hand, as well as the link to the website where um, everyone can browse the frequently asked questions area. So, thank you so much for being here this evening. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. Uh, great work that you guys do, and um, we'll we'll keep in touch. All right. Awesome. Okay, Everyone thank have you. a great evening. Thank you thank so much. You. Thank you. See you at the NFB. Looking forward to thank it. You. Thank you. Have a nice night, thank everyone. You. Bye -bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you.